Hello, my name is Philip Cameron, and I'm joined with my daughter, Melody, and we are so glad you can join us today for a very special... I want to tell you a story today, a true story, that will show you the power of love. And it is only a reflection of the great love that God has for us. You'll be hearing some updates from our work in Moldova. I think you're going to be blessed today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. This is Daily Faith. In Great Britain, there is a race, a horse race called the Grand National. Now, I know you guys over here like running for the roses and, and you have your triple crowns, but I kind of like our Grand National better. It's, it is a terrifying race. These horses run, I think it's a mile and a half or two miles, and they're, they've got to jump over fences. And some of the fence, fences are eight and 10 feet tall, made of brush. It is the most terrifying thing. Horses die, jockeys have been killed. It is an amazing sports event. It is, the, it is a horse racing event of the year. This is a true story. At an auction, there was horses that were being bought by rich and powerful people. The Arabs were buying them and, and wealthy millionaires from America come to these auctions. And some of the horses were going for millions of dollars. And at the end of the, the tail end of this auction, years ago, this is decades ago now, but there was a horse that was for sale called Red Rum. Red Rum. Red Rum was bought for a thousand pounds, about thirteen hundred dollars. True story. The trainer took this horse and took it to his stables in Liverpool, England. And the horse had been beaten so badly that it was so skittish and afraid that it, 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 it couldn't be handled. And they finally got it into a stable. And it stood at the back of the stall, afraid of anyone that would come near it. And it was literally, um, everyone thought the man was crazy. Listen to this. Every day at a certain time, same time every day, he would show up at the horse's stable with sugar cubes in his hand. And you try to coax the horse from the back of the stall towards him. And little by little, day after day, the horse came to him and finally ate some of the sugar cubes out of his hand. And he was able to stroke the horse's nose and, and pat it on the, on the side of his neck. And after that, the horse was waiting for him. So when he came to the stable, the horse was waiting for this master. What beating couldn't do? Love does. God in his dealings with me doesn't beat me. He loves me. There are times he allows circumstance to beat me. But when I go to him, I always find a hand of love. Red rum became known as the nag from the slags, the slums. This horse... The trainer began to run it with extra weight on its back. And it, would, and it loved the, the trainer so much that it wouldn't stop. And the more he ran it and the more weight he put on it. And finally, he entered it as, a, as a, a dark horse, as an outsider in the Grand National. And the miracle of miracles happened. Red Rum beat every other horse all the high bloodlines, all the millions of dollars was beaten by a thousand pound horse that fell in love with his trainer. I think you may be watching the video of it right now. I, I told my son to find the video. And you're watching. And as this horse ran, it ran away from the rest of the horses by lengths. It was one of the greatest victories of the Grand National of all time. Love is the most powerful force in the world. My concern for you and your family is to see your family saved. 
nagging them will never bring them to Jesus. In fact, a lot of us get so holy when we get saved that the people, I mean, you imagine, look at it from their point of view. One day you're a totally normal person in their eyes. You go to the pub, you drink, you do this, and you live, and, and suddenly you get religion. They don't understand the power of redemption and what, the transformation that's salvation. To them on the outside, you just got religion, and suddenly you have changed from this outgoing, happy, crazy person to this dead, boring, nagging person. Many times, the only time our unsaved loved ones pray is when they see us. And they go, oh, no, Lord, not them. Please, Lord, not them. The Bible says love is the greatest power. There is no answer to love. In the scripture, it talks about all the different virtues. But the greatest of these is love. And love never fails. When Jesus came into our family and saved us, it wasn't, it wasn't hell, fire, and damnation. My father, I told you the other day how our family, there was 200 years, every, every man in our family was an alcoholic for 200 years. In one six-week space of time, 96 folk were saved in this move of God and 67 were Camerons. And my mom got saved during that time. She wrote my dad, who was serving the British Army in Italy, and she said, I've fallen in love with a man called Jesus. And my father thought she'd actually fallen in love with a man called Jesus. And she explained that Jesus was the Son of God and he died on the cross. And, and he kind of, he says, you get out this religious nonsense. Whenever my mom could get my dad to go to church, which was on a rare occasion, the preacher, knowing that Simon Cameron was in the service, would, would get out the, the hellfire and brimstone messages and they would just just try to scare my father into the kingdom of God. None of it worked. But one day, he went home to my mom and had a big fight with her. And this woman that had, been, she'd been praying at this time for seven years, asking God to save him for seven years. And he came home and he had a great big fight. I'm sick of this religion. I'm sick of God. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of everything. I'm done. And she prayed and he, he left the little shack they were living in and went down to his work and at two o'clock in the afternoon my mother said I can't take this anymore I, I just can't bear this anymore and she gave him to Jesus and the Bible <laughs> the Bible he was working on a saw putting a, a piece of wood into a saw and the love of God overwhelmed him he began to weep and they carried him back to my mom. And my mom couldn't believe that you, this guy that was screaming at her an hour or so ago was now weeping on, the, on the, the sofa in their little house. And he began to say these words, I am not worthy. I am not worthy. Wendy, I'm not worthy. And what happened was he saw a vision of Jesus hanging on the cross. In all the hell, fire, and brimstone couldn't move him. But love lifted him out of darkness. And I want to tell you something. That love can lift your family, can lift your son out of darkness. But you are, the, you are the vessel. You are the conduit through which the love of God flows. Instead of trying to nag your, your loved ones to Jesus, why don't you ask God to show you and manifest through your life his love. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Do you remember what happened to you? Love lifted me thank you lord jesus love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted 
And I pray for you right now that the love of God, not the love of man that changes and fails, but the love of God that is everlasting will come inside you and flow out through you into the world you live in. It's the greatest power you have. Money, not so powerful. Position, not so powerful. But the love of God can change everyone's life. I pray for your family right now in the name of Jesus. I ask God to use you as the, just as a vessel of love to pour out. Call someone today. Tell them, I've been thinking about you and I love you. You know, we live in a hard world. Work is hard. Business is hard. Everything is tough. Someone showing love makes all the difference. I love you. And I'm so glad you're with us today. Watch this. I'll be back in a moment. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. This book may change the destiny of your family. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Something happens when you hear of someone else being saved and, and having their lives transformed. Well, faith's going to come by reading when you read this book. And I want you to know this, that you are not, your family is not too far away from the grace of God and the love of God. The closer my dad got to getting saved, the, the meaner he became, the harder he became. And sometimes the devil uses that to make us give up and quit. A lot of folk will give up the, the entire destiny of their family for five minutes peace. I encourage you today, don't quit praying for your family. And this book is a handbook. The first half of it, I tell how God did it to us, how God saved our family. I promise you, it is a, it's a worthy read. And then the second half of the book, I go into the scripture to teach you how to see your family saved. You need to get this book. You need to get this for someone. You know someone is going through a struggle right now with a family. You can get this book. 833-324-5932. Daily Faith is, if, if, you, if you type it out, Daily Faith on your, your phone, it works the same way. But if you dial 833-324-5932 and just call up and say, we want that book and we'll send it to you. And also, if you have unsaved loved ones, if you have someone in your family that you want me to believe God with you for, in our office we have an ark. It's a model that my wife Chrissy's uncle made in Scotland. And we took it over to America and we made a glass box for it. So on the side of this wee ark, there's a door that opens. And I, I hold your loved ones in prayer. I hold them in my hands as touching something. The Bible says, to agree as touching something, it shall happen. And once I've prayed, I put them symbolically into the ark. And it stays in our office. And if you have an unsafe loved one, if you know someone, I just, I just feel this today, that you, you know someone in your, in your life and their kids are going through a bad time and they're struggling and they're, they're disappointed and they're, you know, this is your moment to act in faith and show the love of God. And say, listen, here's this fella called Philip Cameron, one L, don't give me two L's. And um, if you send your, you can send your prayer request to PO Box 242-246 in Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. Can you imagine a Scotsman ending up living in Alabama? Don't you tell me that God doesn't have a sense of humor. I went there, out to the south to try to convince them all to speak like me. And, and my daughter, Melody, sitting next to me, you sound like Yao. 
Uh, Come on, say something. It's true. It's true. I can't deny it. <laughs> There's nothing I can say. <laughs> when I first put Melanie in school, she went to a Christian school, and the first couple of days, she came home two weeks, and in my house, my wife and I are Scottish, so we speak Scottish all the time. It's a Doric. We talk about a hoose instead of a, a house, and a moose instead of a mouse, and this is Mahid, and Ma'een, and Malugs, and Mamu, and it's a, a totally different language. So I speak this all the time, and um, I guess that's why I've kept my accent. So she went to school and came back after a couple of weeks, and she says, Dad, in speaking Scottish to me, Dad, I've learned, some, I've learned something in school today. I says, oh, tell me what it is. So she put her hand on her, her, her heart and she said, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And I thought, oh, my Lord. I said to my wife, I said, Chrissy, they've, kept, they've ruined our daughter. It's taken them two weeks and they've spoiled it. And uh, anyway, listen, we have a tremendous story to tell you and a tremendous thing that's taking place in a country far away in Eastern Europe called Moldova. And uh, this country is the poorest in all of Europe. It's like Africa in Europe. You have a main city called Chisinau, and then outside of that, a mile or two miles, there's no sidewalks, there's no roads, there's no indoor plumbing, there's no toilets inside. Poverty is unbelievable. It is the highest population of alcoholism in the world. It has been voted the unhappiest place on earth, literally. And uh, we have gone in there and have found life and love in orphans. And when a young girl or boy is 16 in that country, they put them on the street and traffickers get them and sell them around the world and use them 30 to 50 times a day. And we have homes there that we bring them in, put them back in school because they've given up ever having any real life. They've been told every day in the orphanage that nothing plus nothing will always be nothing. Your mother didn't want you, your father didn't want you. And they come to us and we, we tell them if you're born, God has a plan. You're not a mistake. And we put them back in school and the results are absolutely unbelievable. And I want you to meet a very special young girl called Nicoletta. And uh, listen to her testimony, what God has done in her life through folk like you helping the orphan's hands. Watch this. Hello, my name is Nicoleta, and today I want to share with you a little bit of my testimony and how I met with God. From what I remember, at age of five, my mother left me and my sister to live with our father. And after a year, she came back. But she came back not because she loved us or because she wanted to stay with us, but she came back because she wanted to sell me and my sister. Even though I was little, I understood that. Um, at that point, my whole world fell apart. I was broken and I couldn't understand how the person who was supposed to love you and care you just sell you. After she left, um, my father put me and my sister in an orphanage because he was disabled and he couldn't take care of us. I spent nine years in the largest orphanage from Moldova, uh, in Strashen. All the time that I spent in the orphanage wasn't really good because the teachers were mean to us and they were treating us like we are nothing. And they were saying to us that uh, you are nothing, you are going to achieve nothing in this, in this life. At the age of 16, when I finished the orphanage, I had nowhere to go and I had no hope for the future. But God had a plan with me all along, and I met the Cameron family. The Cameron family showed us what real love is and what the family is supposed to mean, and I'm really thankful for them. And what our goal is, together with the orphan's hands, is to go out and reach those who are in need and to show them that there is still hope for them and that God cares about them and He is always there for them. Before that I was broken, but now I'm blessed. Even though you're going through difficulties or you have a hard time, I want to encourage you that there is a God who cares about you and He is always there for you. And the same way He had a plan with me, He has a plan with your life too. And be a blessing for others. Isn't that amazing? Nicoletta came to us from the orphanage at 16. 
She just graduated. She has turned out, you may have heard it at the end of her little testimony, talking about if, if, if you're going through a hard time, God has a plan for your life. God had a plan for my life. You can, you, Nicoletta's story, we've known Nicoletta since she was about 10 years old. Yeah. A little a picture of sure we'll, we'll show you a picture. Gorgeous, adorable little, little thing. blonde-headed girl. And we found out Nicoletta's from a, a gypsy family. Um, the very, when she first came into our house, the very first thing she said to dad was, I'm a gypsy. Like she just blurted it out. Like, I, I just have to tell you, I need to let you know up front, I'm a gypsy. Um, but she, what did, and what did I say to her? He says, I love gypsies. I love gypsies. <laughs> and that, yeah. Um, but when she was a little girl, um, you know, we have this um, idea of gypsies as being dark skin, dark hair. Um, and she comes from a gypsy family and her, her family had come upon her mom talking about selling Nicoletta um, to, um, I don't know what you'd call it, a, a band of... A syndicate of gypsies. A syndicate, yes. Because, um, because she was blonde, she would be she could go in and steal and no one would suspect Undetected, her. yeah. And so her mother was caught the in the act of selling her. It was literally, the police caught her mother selling Nicoletta to a gypsy syndicate. Yeah. And they put her in prison. Her father was disabled. He put her in the orphanage. Mm -hmm. And she was there for 10 years, just, w just wasted, wasted. Can you imagine the stigma of, I mean, w when she came to me, first thing she said, I am a gypsy. And I hugged her and I said, oh, I love gypsies. She was so embarrassed. She wanted to get, she wanted to get the rejection immediately. She just wanted me to say to her, well, get away. And I hugged her and I said, oh, I love gypsies. And it, tr it changed her life. That act of love, you talk about the power of love, that one act of holding her and saying, I love gypsies, totally transformed her life. And she's now one of our leaders in the house. She is, yep. She just graduated, as you said. Yes, yeah, she but did. She, yeah, she, we rely on her for all kinds of mission outreach. And, and like, if God has a plan for her life, bringing her from, from that point to leading teens, going into the villages and ministering to kids, He's got a plan for your life, and not only does he have a plan for your life, he has a plan for your unsaved daughter's life. Uh, he has a plan for your husband. No one is beyond his reach. Not in the, the most remote villages of Moldova. No. Not in a bar in the seediest part of town and wherever you live. His grip can go beyond to the darkest, emptiest places. His love has no limit. His yeah. grace has no measure. No. His power has no boundaries known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. And the key to these kids, like Nicoletta, finding hope in life, is they meet us because folk like you send us. At 16, a little girl is given a bus ticket to whatever name of town happens to be on her birth certificate and she's sent away and put out on the street. Traffickers come along and offer them fake jobs. And girls like Nicoletta by the thousand, mm -hmm. by the thousands, have been taken from Moldova and sold all over the world. The Orphan's Hands operates homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. We decided to build a house at the top of the cliff instead of a morgue at the bottom. And we go to the orphanages and take them in and train them and put them back in school and turn orphans into sons and daughters into missionaries. We have a new project called Vatra Village, six houses that need your support. For every 120 people, they give a dollar a day, we can open a house. Can you help us open a house to take in more Nicolettas? A dollar a day won't change your life. But someone helped us to have a bed for Nicoletta and allowed her to come and find safety in Jesus. 
Will you be part of this miracle? The phone number, 1-833-324-5932 or 1-833-DAILY-FAITH that you can write and figure out on the keyboard, what it, on the, the phone pad what it is. You can give a dollar a day. If 120 people watching right now give one dollar a day, we can open a house for, not, for 15 more kids, 90 altogether in the village. Will you allow God to use your hand to be His hand extended? Thank you so much. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to post office box 242246 Montgomery, Alabama 36124 So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.